the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre, SBE NRC, is the successor to the CRC for construction innovation. SBE NRC is a key research broker between industry, government and research organisations, servicing the built environment industry. The three research streams focus on environmental, social and economic sustainability, areas identified by national industry stakeholders as the key areas that will drive productivity and industry development in the built environment industry. This is carried out through three programs. Program 1, Greening the Built Environment. Program 2, People, Processes and Procurement. And Program 3, Productivity through Innovation. Our mission is to be a world-class research and knowledge broker in sustainable infrastructure and building design, construction and management. In 2014, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued their fifth assessment report. This highlighted that Australia is particularly vulnerable to the effects of climate change due to intensifying weather events which are already leading to more frequent and intense floods and heat damage to infrastructure. Additionally, the uncertainty around changing rainfall patterns will remain a significant challenge for adaptation and planning. Australian infrastructure agencies will therefore face a range of new challenges that will need to be addressed throughout the design, construction, operation and maintenance of new infrastructure. Currently maintenance of roads costs Australia some 5 billion Australian dollars and by 2100 this is expected to increase by 30%. A 2013 study found that road agencies identified more frequent and costly maintenance as the most relevant trend, followed by the need for more resilient infrastructure and funding constraints for new projects and maintenance of existing infrastructure. To face these challenges and to make whole-of-life transport infrastructure management more cost-efficient, transport agencies will have to consider the adoption of a number of new technologies and processes. This will help them in responding to the pressures associated with the future of roads and remain at the cutting edge of best practice on road planning, assessment, building and management. In their 2014 report examining the infrastructure sector, the Australian Productivity Commission advocated for clients to invest more in the initial design and conduct better cost-benefit analysis while improving the quality of information used to assess tenders. This report also recommends the use of Building Information Modelling BIM, for complex projects from the early design phase to provide for lower construction costs and the selection of the lowest whole-of-life design option. The Commission also recommends clients give serious consideration to where in their better practice guides they may specify the use of BIM. BIM, also known as Virtual Design and Construction VDC, is both a technology and process that could assist transport agencies to be more cost-effective through better planning and higher productivity. The following video is an extract of a production by the Department of Public Works of the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment. The English translation was done by Open BIM Lab. The original video is titled BIM, Sky is the Limit, and can be found on the SBE NRC YouTube channel. Communicating and building in one comprehensible language is possible. With BIM. BIM stands for Build Information Model. BIM is for everyone in the construction industry. In fact, you won't be able to escape it. But what actually is BIM? BIM is a way of working together. It's a methodology for the integral design, construction, and maintenance of a project with all partners. This is done by a mutual exchange of data resulting in a complete digital description of a building project. You can use BIM with a bridge, a road, a tunnel, or a complete infrastructure, also with a building or a complex of buildings. BIM is available for the entire life cycle of a construction project, from design through construction, management, maintenance, even to demolition. Information about construction, maintenance, costs, and safety all comes from the same source, BIM. Why BIM? BIM exists to enhance the performance of a construction project or network infrastructure. This is possible because the information is standardized and available for the entire life cycle of the structure. With BIM, you get better cooperation and decisions are easier to make. Fewer transaction costs, fewer failure costs due to error and higher quality. Virtual construction also enhances quality not just within a specific building or infrastructure project, but also within the entire environment. You can establish relationships between a building and its functions, the roads around it, and its performance. 
the possibility of creating a more sustainable environment is brought considerably closer. Building with BIM is above all smart. BIM can therefore provide sustainability benefits by means of better analysis of the impact of alternative designs and key performance indicators that can be monitored and optimized throughout the life cycle of the asset. The initial cost of implementing BIM is a common concern among new adopters, especially small and medium enterprises, SMEs. International surveys have however shown that their smaller size can play as an advantage for adoption and that independently of size, return of investment is reported to be positive by the majority of those surveyed. In Australia, the cost burden on companies engaged by organisations such as state transport agencies may not be as significant as for those in the building industry. At least at a state level, there would only be a single set of specifications, guidelines, policies, software tools and macros developed by a single major client. This would ensure localised standards and requirements are met. In fact, it will likely make things easier for companies to deliver transport infrastructure projects as they will have more clarity in exactly what is required of them for approvals and sign-offs. BIM can help fulfil recommendations by Infrastructure Australia regarding the importance of including potential impacts of climate change and other environmental impacts when making decisions on urban transport infrastructure planning, investment and management. BIM can also be used as a tool to monitor progress towards sustainability strategic targets set by Australian transport agencies through the use of key performance indicators that can be transferred and monitored throughout the assets life cycle. Currently with CAD, some planning environments lack the capability to perform analysis relating to sustainability targets, which have a higher impact when carried out at early design and pre-construction phases. This leads to the inefficient process of retroactively modifying the design to achieve a set of performance criteria. This is particularly important when considering that research has shown that programming and asset specifications developed in the early phases determine up to 80% of the environmental pollution and operational cost of the asset. The lack of knowledge transfer related to sustainable alternatives and their performance specifications is commonly observed between transport infrastructure projects. This hinders the use of those alternatives that have been implemented successfully in previous projects and forms a major barrier to the use of innovative materials materials that might reduce the environmental impact and cost of new infrastructure projects. BIM can help to reduce this gap by increasing the transferability and accessibility of such information to the organisation as a whole. BIM also provides the opportunity for information from different disciplines to be integrated within the model and the tools to measure and analyse sustainability performance of the project and resulting asset throughout its life cycle. Effectively, BIM can reduce the cost of performing such analysis and monitoring by making the information required for sustainable design, analysis and certification routinely available simply as a byproduct of the standard design process. Alternative and scenario analysis is a tool that can be used to support informed decision making by taking into account emerging challenges, developing and testing and adopting new approaches in a virtual environment, and allowing a better understanding of how different issues relate to each other and what the repercussions of each decision are. Based on current ICT adoption trends, BIM can eventually lead to a fully integrated virtual design and construction approach where the projects are completely simulated before breaking ground. BIM can therefore provide beneficial project outcomes by enabling the rapid analysis of different scenarios related to the construction process and the constructed asset throughout its life cycle. In Australia, transport authorities have a central role in driving initiatives to reduce the environmental impact of the construction process and operation of the final asset. Energy use and the associated greenhouse gas emissions are a significant part of these impacts and are often used as KPIs for environmental goals. The critical age of most road infrastructure is 50 years. Over this period, lighting a typical arterial road and freeway ramp would consume 640 kilowatts per meter of road. This energy consumption can be significantly reduced by better planning. For example, the New York City Department of Transportation determined that the city's roads account for approximately 6% of the total annual municipal energy use. By replacing over 80,000 bulbs to low energy alternatives and virtually all of their traffic signals to LED, the department received a saving of 81% annual energy usage and an approximate financial saving of 6.3 million US dollars a year 
due to the lower energy and maintenance cost. This type of analysis could be carried out in BIM as part of the routine planning, design, construction and asset management phases of any project. Using BIM would also allow agencies to plan ahead to accommodate for new technologies that may not be feasible now. This flexibility to allow changes and to keep different scenarios studied can provide benefits for future operation strategies. Having an accurate digital model for the road network could provide an additional benefit to asset managers by including maintenance schedules and specifications. These models could also eventually be integrated into smart lighting systems such as those planned to be used in the Netherlands and already in use in Scandinavia. BIM has the potential to be used in two key ways to help Australia face the challenges outlined by the IPCC and become more resilient. With intensifying weather events, it is expected that Australia will have more disaster events. The societal, economic and environmental impact of such events will depend on the actions taken by the government to repair, mitigate and recover. In terms of preparedness, BIM can be used to test the impact of different scenarios on different infrastructure designs. It can add another layer of information to the decision-making process by understanding infrastructure assets as part of a network and how they will be affected by different events as well as the level of disaster for different areas. The models can also be integrated into disaster preparedness planning by tapping into and distributing building information in real time to remote monitoring stations and emergency responders. For example, by integrating with already existing systems in traffic management centers. BIM can therefore help plan more resilient infrastructure, reduce risk both to the general population and to the emergency responders, and improve the efficiency and effectiveness of disaster response efforts. In 2009, the Swedish government appointed a committee to study the productivity and level of innovation of public clients and provided recommendations to improve current practices. The main recommendations of the committee included that public sector clients should consider long-term actions that provide improved planning and procurement to allow businesses to perform tasks in a more efficient and creative way and to increase the proportion of turnkey projects. The Swedish Transport Administration addressed this by developing a strategy that would lead to a systematic implementation of BIM through the development of a number of large and small scale roads, tunnels and rail pilot projects and including the use of BIM in all new projects from 2015. Highland Oss is probably one of the best known pilot projects. With the total value of 1.8 billion Australian dollars, the project consists of two parallel railway tunnels 8.7 kilometres long to be completed by mid-2015. Some of the challenges this project has had to face include excavation works through hard and and soft rock and clay, high water pressure and significant restrictions regarding leakage to groundwater due to a sensitive land area. These challenges led to the manufacturing of 40,000 segments to provide a watertight tunnel lining. BIM has been used to optimize production throughout the different construction stages, coordinate activities between disciplines, increase quality throughout the life cycle through better design and methodology as well as better facility documentation for operations, cost control and and reduce risk. It has also been used for machine control, survey layout, project drawings, clash detection, accurate quantities, specifications and logistics. They also expect to use it further for augmented reality visualization in the coming stages. At this point there is no specific information about how the Swedish Transport Administration has been using BIM to monitor and manage the environmental impact of the construction and operations of the tunnel. However, the model is being used as a single source of information for the project. Additionally, a key objective of this project is to integrate the information management throughout the life cycle of the asset. It is therefore expected that it will be integrated with processes that aim to achieve their long-term environmental goals. Additionally, one of the highest priorities of the Swedish Transport Administration is to include efforts to reduce energy consumption of Swedish transport infrastructure into ongoing business development activities. This is expected to be combined with their BIM implementation efforts. In the coming decades, Australia will be facing difficult challenges as the result of a changing climate made worse by uncertainty around future weather patterns. Australian authorities are responsible for taking steps towards mitigating the environmental and climactic impact of their actions. They are also responsible for increasing the resilience of the infrastructure that supports society. This requires strategic medium to long-term planning which aims to mitigate the consequences of climate change. 
Throughout the life cycle of a project, BIM can provide benefits that are not yet being taken full advantage of. This is especially the case for infrastructure assets. In conclusion, BIM used in the early design of transport infrastructure could provide productivity gains through improved interoperability and documentation, the opportunity to carry out detailed cost-benefit analysis leading to operational cost savings, coordinated planning of street and highway lighting with other energy and environmental considerations, measurable KPIs that include long-term impact factors which are transferable throughout the project lifecycle, and the opportunity for integrating design documentation with sustainable sustainability whole-of-life targets.